In his New Year message, EFF leader Julius Malema urged all qualifying students to turn up at tertiary institutions of their choice this year. We want all young people who have passed their metric in the past and could not afford to go to universities or FET colleges to report to the gates of all tertiary institutions next year because President Zuma has promised free education 2018 and we want to show him that if he was bluffing, we were not bluffing. We were serious about it. Many young people had surrendered to work as petrol attendants, as security guards, even when they had passed properly in the past because they could not afford. This is their chance to go to the university. Let them go to the best of the best universities. Meanwhile, there are rising calls for more clarity on how the fee-free education will be funded. Universities South Africa says it's also concerned that the new funding model will only be applied to first-year students, which may not sit well with others. It also says universities were not properly consulted. The Minister of Higher Education, Khlingiwe Mkize, is confident, however, that Treasury will make an announcement soon. And she joins us now from our studio in Durban. Good evening to you, uh, Minister. Let's start with Julius Malema's call. Do you agree that that was reckless? Well, I think uh, that was a political statement. The onus is upon us, higher education, and institutions of uh, higher learning, universities and colleges to remind students or applicants that the conditions of entry to universities will apply at all times. In other words, depending on the degree you want to do, you have to apply, you have to qualify in terms of the re required marks. And on, on top of that, you then have to approach NESFAS and their deadlines within which all this should be done. So I think all university students, they understand that, that you don't just pack your bag and go to an institution not knowing what degree to qualify for, uh, having not been admitted to it, having no student number, because that is a chaos. He, he is encouraging uh, that. Could there be chaos? Or are, are you worried about the, the possibility? Well, you know, initially I didn't take it seriously. I said, well, it's a political statement. I've made a call to all our institutions of higher learning to really put the communique, which we, we sent to them before the end of the year, on their websites. But also there were prior consultations with uh, USEF, the representative body, and some uh, uh, vice chancellors where we clearly indicate uh, which way things were going in terms of the recommendations of the Judge Hair Commission report that we're not going to take all of them at a go, but definitely we were focusing on what we was already within FISCA's plan to support students and increase it in such a way that no students drop out because they would have a university fee and a, a, a limited amount for food, not much for transport, not much for accommodation. So we said we'll improve for those who are already have already applied, accepted, and they are within uh, the, 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 the kitty. All right, so people who've already applied, they would have uh, received the NSFAS loan, but now it will be a grant. Is that correct? They, they will receive the same amount, but they know it doesn't have to be paid back. Let's start with the first years. The people who have applied for 2018 to be in the universities in 2018, they applied long time ago. Universities had closure dates for application. So the technical teams, as they were working, they knew more or less how many people have applied, how many qualify. There are, however, those who might have applied but they, they are, their parents earn a little bit more than the traditional standard of 120. Those are the ones who then will be considered for a full subsidy, what is called free education during the first year. And the, the, the numbers that we worked on, 
uh, didn't indicate that that will be a high percentage of people mm. because they would have already applied. They, they are, correct me if I'm wrong, people who uh, would now qualify, but maybe last year they held back. Uh, they, they didn't apply knowing that they couldn't afford the fees. So, so it does seem uh, illogical perhaps to announce uh, this fee-free education, to announce the brackets at the end of last year, when you're saying basically by that stage already uh, the places had been filled. Yeah, you know, people, I mean, our memories sometimes are short. Remember, the, there was a judge here commission, which is established at the call of one of the university vice chancellors while they were having a meeting with the president. The report had to be released. We made a call that the president should release it. The technical teams started working, meaning treasury, monitoring evaluation, higher education, to really look at numbers. When they finished, I remember a Thursday before the announcement, the Minister of Finance looked at what was achieved and cleared it in a meeting of a technical team, ministers and senior government officials. Logically, I don't think the president would have sat on it. Maybe what we needed to do immediately was to emphasize what we are saying today. We assumed anyone who applies, be it a college or a university, they know that there is what is the processing of the application, there is an acceptance, there is a student number that you get, and then of course the referral to NESFAS. We assume all those conditions are understood by all, that they apply at all times. Hence, we are communicating now and we'll continue communicating throughout the week. We'll have even a formal government communication held meeting to really clarify all that. Remember, there are also TVET colleges, which we are elevating, saying they are critical for skills development. Remember, we're looking at the economy. Mm. Where in most countries where they managed to cut down on unemployment, countries like Germany, Switzerland, they elevate the skills level. Minister, so the Minister announcement sure. spoke about universities and TVET colleges. Minister, sure, but this isn't a plan to, to get people into TVET colleges. This was about universities. My, my question is, do you accept there will be frustration among students who realize now they could have benefited if, if this announcement had come in time when they could even apply? And, and what about universities, South Africa, uh, saying that there could be resentment among other students, depending on how it works, maybe second or third years, who've just missed this. So, so they won't benefit and they'll watch a, a new influx of first years who do benefit. Could there be any fallout there? Well, wherever you implement a new policy, the duty is how you manage the process. I'm one person who wouldn't encourage government to invest in ignorance and exclusive education. We've done that for 20 years. I don't think it's good for our country. Somewhere we had to make a start to improve the, 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 the entrance level for other people who cannot on their own afford. It, it comes with risk. It has to be managed. We'll continue the communication. We'll work in partnership with universities, assuring them that we respect their admission criteria, and we expect the public, the, stu the applicants, also to respect that and to only go to universities per invitation. Also, the same applies to NESFAS. You can only access it per offer by NESFAS. So there will be challenges. I accept it from what I've picked up on uh, trending on uh, social media and other forms of communication, but we have to manage it. When I say we, especially each and every institution, has to communicate, put information on the website, and we prepare them for that. We shared the communication plan. Uh, we met with the registrars of universities, looking at the status of readiness, and we'll still continue to work in support of all our institutions. The announcement by the president, it, it, impla it, it affected universities and TVET colleges. 
because that's a package we we are working within for knowledge economy and the skills uh, which are required in this country in general. Minister, while you say you're working with the institutions, they say they were not uh, consulted uh, before that announcement. And there's still huge uh, uncertainty around the funding. We spoke at the ANC conference. There was no clarity then. You said uh, maybe the money would be found. There's a lot of fat uh, 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 groups that don't, government uh, departments that don't spend all of their budget. But, but at this stage, given uh, the uncertainty, given where our economy is, uh, how tight the budget is, surely South Africa needs to know exactly how this will be funded. It's true. Let's just be correct this information and be factual. There was a due process before an announcement. The technical team of the departments I've made reference to actually sat down and looked at budgetary implications. The announcement was only cleared by the Minister of Finance uh, uh, after the due process. And there are, no, there are no new budget votes that we are talking about. It's already within the system of NESFAS that we, we look at university education, transport and accommodation. The difference is that in the past, it wasn't sufficient to keep a student throughout the year. Some dropped out because it wasn't sufficient. And that's the improvement that we have spoken about. But there has been a due process to look at where we begin to phase in this free education. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Looking, We looked at the numbers of all those who have up, uh, applied for entrance at universities in 2018. So we'll continue with the campaign, even early in the year, promoting different TVET colleges and the skills offerings that people can get from there and all other relevant information. If there's been due process, can you not tell us exactly uh, where the money will come from? There's concern that taxes will go up or maybe other important priority budget items will have to be cut. Yeah, I, you see, I need to be careful because we haven't uh, been given information as to where we, we know that all what we're talking about has been budgeted for in the past. We assume in any fiscus there is always an anticipation of an increase. It's like how, you know, in the pharmaceuticals, there will always be an expectation that there might be more money needed. There's no new budget vote or item that has been introduced so far. That's the assurance we got from the technical team, which worked uh, for weeks on looking at where they can get the money from. And we, it's not a tradition in government. When the budget allocations are announced, there is a tradition whereby they, you, you assume those who are, who are that mandate have done their work and you, you go by the, the, the offering they make to individual departments. So in this instance, really, the, after a, a, a due process of, uh, at a high level of technical people, we, we, we had no doubt when the Minister of Finance himself was satisfied with the matter. But for some reasons, this matter, I think, has been politicized, uh, a linked to the conference and it's unfortunate because really this is simply about investing in the future we can't invest in ignorance because it will be too costly for us yeah. but we rather invest in education and skilling of our youth yes. any other uh, or choice we make besides that one is a recipe for what we've seen in northern africa and other countries where there's social mobilization about government against government. All right. Thank you very much. Minister of Higher Education from our studios in Durban, Hlingiwe Mkize. We take a